for a traditional injection molding tool, you'd be looking at two to three months at minimum to create a production level tool, even if you're going to use it for prototyping and tens of thousands of dollars. Whereas this can produce in sub tens of thousands, usually one to $2,000 for a collective of parts within a few weeks at the moment. And we're working on working that timeline down. Once we're given a model and a direction to design in, parts in hand within 10 days is our goal. You're listening to the Drone Radio Show podcast, the show about drones and the people who use them for business, fun, and research. Hosted by Randy Goers. Hello, everyone. This is Randy Goers, and welcome to the Drone Radio Show podcast, episode 378. Is there a way to make drones lighter, stronger, and more scalable without sacrificing safety and integrity? One company believes there is. Jeremy Smith is the business development manager for Alpine Advanced Materials, a leader in the design and manufacture of custom engineered parts and products for the world's most demanding aerospace, defense, and space applications. The company commercializes high performance materials originally developed and qualified by top defense contractors, including its flagship. HX5 military aviation grade nanocomposite. Engineered to replace machine aluminum, HX5 is half the weight and has been both tested and proven against the harshest environments in the world. HX5 is currently in use on jet fighters, high speed helicopters, amphibious transport vehicles, rockets, and satellites. It is highly adaptable without sacrificing strength or performance. Its customization and manufacturability here in the United States, combined with its high tolerance and dimensional stability, make it an ideal alternative to the cost and production challenge associated with aluminum. That makes HX5 ideal for use in the unmanned aerial industry. At Alpine Advanced Materials, Jeremy works in the OEM and UAV markets. Previously, he served as a sales engineer for Franklin Products, which specializes in aircraft seating comfort and covers. He spent the past several years focused on aviation ergonomics, working with airliners and interior OEMs to optimize customer in-flight comfort. Over his career, Jeremy has specialized in the custom material markets for aviation, holding active roles in the design, sales, production, and management of metal parts and their functional systems. He has served aviation, defense, energy, and heavy manufacturing industries. In this episode of the Drone Radio Show, Jeremy talks about Alpine Advanced Materials, its aviation-grade nanocomposite, and how it can help make stronger, lighter, and more scalable drones. But before we hear from Jeremy, I want to thank those of you who have been supporting my funding campaign. For as little as $3 per month, you can help defray the cost of production and help keep the podcast going and growing. You'll also be able to talk about current shows, bounce around ideas for future episodes, suggest questions of upcoming guests, and gain access to exclusive content. To become a Drone Radio Show advocate, go to patreon.com slash drone radio show. And if you like, you can also make a one-time donation in any amount at droneradioshow.com slash donate. And by the way, if you have a great story on the use of drones that you'd like to share in a podcast, contact me at randy at droneradioshow.com. So let's learn about aviation-grade nanocomposites and their role in the drone industry with Jeremy Smith of Alpine Advanced Materials. Let's pick up the interview where I asked Jeremy to introduce himself. So my name is Jeremy Smith. I'm a business development manager here at Alpine Advanced Materials, uh, and I'm the lead for the UAV market. Jeremy, what is Alpine Advanced Materials, and what does the company do? 
We are a turnkey solutions provider, uh, obviously utilizing unique advanced materials. And what we do is provide solutions all the way from design through part production that incorporates uh, initial design. We will take someone else's design, generally a customer's design, and do not necessarily a redesign, but an optimize of their design to enhance features for our material, our processes, and obviously the end product. And then we will take that through all the way to production and provide final parts. How does the company relate to the drone industry? Our material is our most unique material. We utilize several advanced materials, but our most unique material is a high strength, lightweight, harsh environment material. So what we can do in the drone industry is help companies fly further, fly faster, be lighter, carry more, and work in uh, harsher environments. Does Alpine Advanced Materials produce the components, or can it produce the entire drone? We will produce components with it. We have not yet done a full-scale drone design. We have the capabilities to do so, uh, but for the most part, we'll use uh, our materials to optimize components and either provide lower level assemblies or simple components to the end user. What's so special about the materials? I mean, we hear of carbon fiber and other lightweight materials. What does Alpine Advanced Materials have and why is it different from others? So we utilize a number of materials that are already available on the market. What we bring that is unique to the market is a novel nanocomposite material called HX5. And that material competes with aerospace grade aluminums to be lighter while maintaining that strength and also to be more environmentally resistant than typical aerospace grade aluminums. And we can also compete with carbon fiber components because throughout the material and our process, it's easier to manufacture at scale with this component and also easier to manufacture complex geometries with this material. How does it compare cost-wise to other materials in the market? We target machined aluminum components or carbon fiber that is a complex geometry. So compared to simple machine components or flat plate aluminums, we are going to be not as cost competitive, but with a complex machine component, especially complex geometries for either aluminum or carbon fiber, at scale, we are extremely cost competitive. And part of that is because we utilize injection molding. We do that to optimize the strength of the material. It is a carbon filled material. Uh, and what we do throughout our design process is use a process called mold flow. There are several different versions of mold flow, but essentially it's an analysis that runs through the uh, injection process of molding. And through that, we can characterize our fiber alignment to meet load requirements and obviously optimize the strength of the end component. Uh, and then utilizing an injection molding as a highly repeatable and fast manufacturing process, we can produce thousands of parts you know, in a matter of days, whereas uh, machining, especially a heavily machined aluminum component, can take several days to complete or several hours to complete. Also requires multiple machines, whereas ours requires just the injection molding machine. And same for carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is a great material in all its forms, but it does have a fairly intense process and can take uh, a lot longer to produce a high number of components. On a drone, what are the typical components that Alpine Advanced Materials manufacturers? So I'll break it down into kind of two uh, responses to that. One for small UAVs or sub 55 pounds, and then another for the larger UAVs, because there's a, a little bit of a different answer for both of those categories. When it comes to the smaller UAVs, typically we will make a number of ancillary components all the way up to full frames. And that's an advantage of utilizing the injection molding process is we can actually uh, use uh, part consolidation to reduce the part count of the assembly uh, and incorporate several, whether it's hardware, any extension pieces, uh, really just any number of those ancillary components into the frame. And that provides a more holistic and robust solution that reduces the points of failure because you'll have less hardware points, less connection points, less components in general, and provides a higher strength between uh, all the components that we do consolidate. 
And then when it comes to larger UAVs, typically what we provide would be uh, payload mounting systems, camera housings. Uh, this material is great for exposed components because it does have great environmental resistance. And then again, for large UAVs, we can do part consolidation here as well, where we'll take uh, a number of parts in a sub-assembly and produce them in one or two injection molding parts, giving, again, less assembly time, less points of failure, and a more robust solution. So you can pretty much do an entire vehicle. Yeah, so we can do everything from the interior of the frame, the frame itself, the boom arms out to the propeller housings, the casings that the motors go into. One of the unique features of this material is its natural EMI attenuation, which you would find in most metals, uh, but not so much in most plastics. There are a number of ways to mitigate EMI by adding different components. There are EMI shielding materials that you can add or EMI shielding coatings. However, most plastics do not respond well to coatings. Uh, what's unique about our material is that it uh, responds well to all coatings, including EMI. So given its natural EMI attenuation and its ability to be coated with additional EMI attenuation, uh, we can provide a final part that has EMI hardening for all of its internal components into the fuselage body and then all the way out to your motors for your propellers, depending on obviously the, the design of the UAV. Uh, but what that does is protect all of those components from interference from their own components, interference from other UAVs in the area, especially as we see swarm drones or swarm UAV systems becoming a very popular uh, defense avenue as well as an entertainment avenue. You can see some very incredible drone light shows or drone coordinated shows that it's important for all those components to have the correct signal without interference. And this material's EMI attenuation allows that to protect those components from being interfered with with respect to any other drones in the area or even counter UAV measures. During production, the HX5 can be formed into any shape required for the job. Correct. Yeah, we can use it for uh, highly complex shapes, even down to simple shapes. It's a high strength, lightweight, so it can uh, handle uh, a lot of uh, your payload mounting systems, especially as we see drone delivery expand, they're going to want to increase the amount of payload weight. Um, what we can do is provide a material that does not add significant weight, but does add significant strength to increase the payload weight, as well as just the general robust nature of the UAV itself. The UAV industry is not the only industry that Alpine serves. The company has been involved with the aviation industry for a number of years. Correct. Yeah, um, we do several different industries to name them kind of in a broad sense. We support the defense industry. We support commercial aviation, private aviation. Uh, we also support some interesting space applications. This material has great harsh environments. So obviously space is one of the harshest environments. It's got gamma radiation hardening. It passes outgassing and obviously anything that is going to space needs to have lightweight to get there. Um, and additionally, we've found that it actually has some unique opportunities in recreational space as well. Everything from small fishing reel gears all the way up to large components for um, extra terrain vehicles. So suffice it to say, the material has been tested in some highly stressful and harsh conditions. Absolutely. It was optimized and initially designed for uh, harsh environments and defense applications. And as, I, as you can imagine, that runs the full gamut of the earthly potentials of harsh environments from cold to hot and then as well as corrosive environments. So it has great resistance against salt spray in marine environments. It has great corrosion resistance against caustic materials. So uh, I believe you recently had a, um, a guest on your show, Lucid Drone, that's doing the um, cleaning systems. A lot of cleaning systems, or at least cleaning materials, can be caustic or at least degrade common materials. Uh, so a material like this helps it maintain a quality part while being exposed to elements such as that. When did the company begin looking at the unmanned systems industry? 
Yeah, I would say probably uh, coming out of the pandemic, we were largely focused in the defense industry. It is a very young company and we are classified as a small business. It stood up in uh, 2018 and initially supported just a small number of defense primes and defense contractors. And as the company grew, one of the markets we identified as uh, having potential is the UAV market, especially as we see uh, with new certifications passing, like beyond visual line of sight, new application spaces opening up, like drone deliveries. Since we work in the aviation space, there's a bit of a crossover. There are a couple drone companies now that are doing aircraft inspections, utilizing UAVs. Um, so we thought that this was a great space to get into as it scales up, because our process lends to a scalable solution. Traditionally, injection molding has had some challenges with prototyping. There are some initial costs associated with developing an injection molded tool that can be prohibitive if you're in an iterative design space, which what we see in the UAV industry is a lot of companies are still in that iterative design space. So that drove us to develop a new method that we call rapid prototype molding. And what it is, is freeform injection molding. And if you're not familiar, uh, we 3D print utilizing this unique resin uh, mold that we can inject into and then dissolve that mold away. So it is a single use mold. However, it does give you an injection molded finished part within days that can then be tested and you know gone through its prototyping requirements prior to developing a production level tool, giving you a low cost for prototyping, but also giving you space to iterate once you've done your testing and redesign it. Do you have an example of how Alpine Advanced Materials was able to benefit a customer? We are in the early production levels with this right now. It's not quite to the market, but it will be a blue SUAS drone. And what we were able to do for this customer was not only give them a lighter material that is able to withstand this environment and also scale up to the volume that they're expecting, uh, we were also able to redesign their UAV in minor details to incorporate some of the ancillary parts to the main frame, giving them one single tool for production that minimized their part count by a low factor. I think we incorporated four or five additional parts, uh, but it greatly reduced their assessment assembly time, allowing them to go to market with a cheaper drone and also faster. Do you find that manufacturers are receptive to this material or is it a hard sell? No, I think they are very open. And I think that is due to the scalability challenge of what a lot of these manufacturers have used traditionally to produce low volume parts. I think a, a lot of the manufacturers that we work with used a form of carbon fiber or machined metallic components. Uh, which are great for low volume op opportunities. But when you want to scale and get to volumes in the low hundreds or even thousands, that lead time starts to grow on you pretty exponentially. Whereas uh, with an injection molding solution and a novel material that can accomplish the same features and requirements that these other materials they were using prior to can do, but at a much higher rate. So once we have a tool created, we can produce several hundred parts in a day. Whereas, again, for a machined aluminum component, it takes time to get on a machine. You have to have a certified operator who's um, these days are becoming harder to find. And that's, I think, one thing that's driving towards a, an injection molding future for this industry, not only at the scale, but when you come to uh, those older or traditional manufacturing methods, it's something that it's uh, the price is going up and the availability is going down, lending a lot of these manufacturers to look for other innovative avenues to solve that problem. Are you able to talk about the base elements of HX5? I mean, is it sourced from relatively available materials or is it akin to a trace mineral that's hard to get? We use chopped nanofibers, which are uh, chopped nanocarbon fibers, which are readily available. Everything we utilize for the resin and for the carbon are commercially off the shelf items that have a healthy supply chain behind them. They're all domestically sourced. Uh, so we've been lucky enough to not have, especially over the last year, uh, have an issue with receiving constituents for the material in. And then when it comes to how they all play together, it's a secret blend of herbs and spices that even I myself am not privy to. I understand uh, the general elements that go into it, but they are in such a tightly controlled manner 
One, because that's a highly repeatable material for us. This material is highly characterized and consistent. And because of that, we tend to tightly control all of the supplies that go into it, especially when it comes to chopped carbon. So there are grades to carbon fibers. Um, you will get A grades, B grades, C grades. We are only ever going to use A grades in this material because we want to keep the consistency of the product what it is. Uh, that's one of our value propositions is not only a repeatable design, but a highly consistent material that's going to perform at the highest level every time. Where is the company located? So we are headquartered in Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, and uh, one of the things that's been exciting for me is seeing, I believe it's Drone Up, has been doing drone delivery services in a north suburb just north of Dallas, Frisco, has been one of the areas that they've been trialing this uh, drone delivery service. So I think it's an innovative space. It's a heavy aerospace industry, but I think it's lending itself to be uh, open to the drone industry as well. Is the product being used by anyone at this time? At the moment, no. We are preparing to bring one to market, uh, but unfortunately at this time we cannot market it until it has released to the market. Uh, but that story should be ready to tell in just a few short months. And then we have a number of others that are either in prototyping or early design phase that early quarter one next year should also be uh, coming live. A lot of our applications at the moment are defense related. So there are some restrictions on what we can say at this time until it is ready. But I will say a number of them are blue SUAS hopefuls or current offerings. Um, so obviously those will be highly marketed and highly published because those are commercial off-the-shelf drones that are also being used in Department of Defense or just general government applications. How long have you been with the company? I've been with the company for uh, just under a year now. My uh, year anniversary will be uh, two weeks from now. What was it about Alpine Advanced Materials that made you decide to be a part of it? Uh, so two things. The material itself is extremely novel and it's exciting. It's something that marries uh, a lot of great values together. It being extremely high strength and low weight, obviously, is a great sell for any material. But then it's flexibility with its post-processing abilities. It's extremely codable. It's machinable. Um, it has very unique features to it that were attractive to me. I'm not a material science by nature, but it's something that I've always been interested in. And uh, I found that what I saw with the material alone was very attractive. And then the company as well does a great job of hiring a player design engineers. So our design team is pretty impressive when it comes to how do we optimize the design. We're not a built to print shop. We can do that, but our core competencies lie in putting our expertise on the line and designing a part to be the best solution for the customer. So I was very excited when I came through the company and saw what they did with the material, not only the material itself. I want to backtrack a little on the rapid prototype molding. What sort of time savings can be achieved by using that process? Yeah, to give you a reference of, you know, for a traditional injection molding tool, you'd be looking at two to three months at minimum to create a production level tool, even if you're going to use it for prototyping and tens of thousands of dollars. Whereas this can produce in sub tens of thousands, usually sub, you know, you're in one to two thousand dollars for a collective of parts uh, within a few weeks at the moment. And we're working on working that timeline down. Our goal is to provide parts in hand once we're given a model and a direction to design in parts in hand within 10 days is our goal, uh, which for injection molding is extremely rapid. Who would be the ideal customer for the HX5 and the production process? It's uh, fairly wide ranging. I will say um, because it is a harsh environment material, a lot of those blue SUAS or similar swarm drones, anyone who's uh, looking to chase a Department of Defense contract, this material one will provide all the requirements necessary, but also provide a scalable solution that will meet that demand. Commonly, we see uh, DOD contracts start with a tech demonstration and a little bit of a prototyping phase, but once that's proven out, they're ready to move up, ramp up very quickly, which can be a challenge for especially small companies. So we partner with them to help them through that scaling process. And then additionally, I think some of the more unique opportunities we see are, I was at uh, AUVSI this year and was very surprised to see from the large UAV side, a very common thread developing of agricultural treatment UAVs. 
So being able to provide crop treatments, not only assessments and you know surveys, but actual crop treatments utilizing an unmanned vehicle. Um, and I think given the sometimes caustic nature of those treatment materials, our material holds up well against that and is not something that's going to be degrading very quickly. Additionally, companies that are creating battery housings Uh, Battery housings can be a tough avenue for composite materials, specifically because a lot of composite materials do not have thermal conductivity. And our material is no different in that, right? It is not a high thermal conductor, which is a positive and a detriment. So on the detrimental side, a lot of components inside the UAV will generate heat. The thermal conductivity of a material is important to dissipate that heat out. And if you're using a composite material, that becomes a challenge. Our material has great compatibility with overmolding aluminum or other similar materials that are heat conductive components. So that we, way we can dissipate that heat outward while still maintaining a sealed, holistic, robust solution. Battery housings are probably the largest challenge when it comes to that because a battery is going to be producing the most amount of heat off put uh, but needs to be dissipated so that the battery itself and then any other components around it are not subject to those high heats that put out of its operating range. How important is it for companies to adopt standard manufacturing processes? So it's important from the scalability perspective. That probably is the primary factor in requiring or you know needing standardization. As you want to scale, you want to reduce the complexity and also points of failure. And so standardization does both of those things. It tends to give you a process that's highly repeatable and highly repeatable in a fast manner. Much like an automobile assembly line. Correct. Yeah. So when you get to uh, significant volumes that we see as the certification landscape gets cut through, there will be more of these units produced. You're going to want to do so faster and more repeatable. There will always be a market for custom solutions uh, that are highly unique and very low volume. Uh, But as we see, the large end of the bell curve is going to be a standard process using some standard components. There will be components across several different UAV manufacturers that are essentially the same component, standardizing it allows them to acquire or provide that component faster and cheaper. If there are any drone manufacturers listening to this podcast, what would you want to say to them? So I think our biggest advantage to uh, those who are listening is to provide scalable solutions, even prototype solutions with the intent of developing a scalable solution. A lot of times we see a lot of these companies have optimized a drone for a low volume or a prototype demonstration. However, they have not prepared for the scalable nature of what it takes to manufacture rapidly and also repeated repeatably. So I think our biggest value not only is in providing novel materials, but in providing expertise and how to provide design and provide scalable solutions that can meet the demand that we are starting to see come from a market that is developing its regulatory space. And for my final question, Jeremy, what message would you like to leave regarding the future of the drone industry? I'm optimistic and excited to see where the future of the drone industry moves, um, especially as we, like I've mentioned a few times, getting through the regulatory landscape is a challenge, uh, but we're in the cusp of a whole new world when it comes to application spaces, whether it's defense applications or civil applications like drone deliveries. You're a city planner, I think, by trade. Uh, So there are now that beyond visual line of sight has become approved for uh, certain applications. I think applications like that are going to start utilizing uh, UAVs a lot more. And then, you know, obviously from there, it only gets better. That's it for episode 379 of the Drone Radio Show. I hope you enjoyed hearing from Jeremy Smith of Alpine Advanced Materials. I want to thank Jeremy for taking the time to speak with me. If you want to learn more about Alpine Advanced Materials or want to connect with Jeremy, check out the webpage at alpineadvancedmaterials.com. If you like the Drone Radio Show, please consider supporting the podcast with a small donation. The content is always free, but for a few dollars per month, you can help defray the cost of production. To donate, go to patreon.com slash drone radio show. And thanks for listening. Your support means a lot to me, 
And I hope you'll listen to more episodes of the Drone Radio Show podcast to hear how others are using drones for business, fun, and research. For the Drone Radio Show, I'm Randy Goers. This has been the Drone Radio Show podcast. More information on today's show can be found on our website at www.droneradioshow.com. If you're using drone technology for business, fun, or research, and would like to share your experience on the show, please visit our website and fill out a guest appearance application. And don't forget to follow us on your favorite social media channels.